Hey guys, we're Adam and Steph, and we're nine months into converting this old school bus into our dream tiny home on wheels. Can you believe it's already been nine months? We of course started by gutting our bus completely, and since then we've worked on a few major projects to get it looking the way she does today. Adam and I are huge perfectionists, and spend a lot of time on every single project we do. So sometimes looking at our bus and seeing it still totally empty, even after all the hard work we've already put into our bus, can be a little discouraging especially considering it's already been nine months. But between real life and real responsibilities, we are only part-time bus converters, and we constantly have to remind ourselves to not compare ourselves to other school conversions on the internet. I think it's important for us to look back on all the progress we've made and make a recap video to put into perspective everything that we've done so far on our build. Although it may sound like we're making this video for us, we want to include some never before seen footage from previous projects and update you guys on what our next steps are in the winter months for our build. We also have an exciting announcement, so make sure you stick around to the end of the video. We bought our bus at the beginning of 2021, while we were both unemployed during lockdown in our province. From the beginning of our relationship, we always dreamed up living on the road together and traveling full time. And when we saw the perfect sized bus on the side of the road for sale, we thought it's the perfect time to turn our dreams into reality. My obsession for travel started in 2015 with a trip to China as a part of an exchange program in college. Upon arriving back in Canada, I felt an emptiness that could only be filled with travel. In the years following, I did a few little trips by plane, but things really started to change when I traveled Canada by car. I wanted to see Canada, all of Canada. So in 2018, I loaded up my Volkswagen Jetta wagon and headed east. And after some revisions to my travel style, I did it again in 2019, driving west and living out of my car for almost two months. I was hooked. There was nothing in life I needed that wasn't in my car. I never really wanted to return from my travels, but there are severe limitations to living in a car year round, especially in Canada. Since high school, I've always told my friends that one day I'm gonna live on the road, even if it was only for six months. For years, I would watch YouTube videos of other people traveling all over the world and something about experiencing new landscapes, new culture, new food, meeting new people and creating great memories was so captivating to me and it was everything I wanted to do. In 2017, I took a trip with my best friend and her brother to Iceland. We were broke university students that just wanted to see a beautiful country, so we rented a car and with barely any plan, we drove all over, pitching a tent wherever we ended up. The freedom I felt on that trip is unforgettable. Looking back on my travel history, I've seen more of the rest of the world than the rest of Canada. I've lived in Ontario my whole life and have never seen any other province before going to BC this past summer. Traveling North America has been a huge dream of mine and building out our schoolie so that we can live comfortably on the road for years to come is incredibly exciting. The key to sustainably living on the road is being able to work on the road. I'm a video producer, so all I need to work is a powerful computer, a good internet connection, and some space for my camera equipment. I haven't yet figured out how to make my business mobile, considering most of my clientele is based out of Northern Ontario. I'd love to use my skills to document and show our adventures. Hopefully with the growth of this YouTube channel, that dream can become a reality. For me, it may be a bit trickier. I went to university in downtown Toronto for fashion design. Making clothes is something I'm really passionate about. Before working on the bus, I had a small clothing business selling fleece sweaters and crochet toques off of my website. I put my business on hold while working on the bus and starting our YouTube channel took a lot of my free time. When we're done our build and finally hit the road, I want to pick back up where I left off with my clothing business. Obviously kept at a very small scale in order for it to be feasible on the road. One perk of making my clothing business mobile though would be that I have the opportunity to show my creations at different art shows and festivals all over North America. Both Adam's plan and my plan of working on the road are just ideas and we haven't hashed out all the logistics yet, but that's okay because at our pace, we won't be done our build anytime soon. I always loved the idea of van life and I had a lot of ideas on what I would do with a van, but trying to fit a studio table large enough for Stephanie to work on made us completely rethink things. We played around with many floor plans, but no matter how smart we tried to use the space, we could not fit it within the 16 feet that the biggest vans allow. That's when we started to play around with the idea of a school bus. 
Our design required about 25 feet of space inside, but the average school bus in Ontario is roughly 40 feet long. That's way too much for us. We wanted a vehicle that was as small as possible that can contain everything we needed. So when we saw a rare medium sized school bus on the side of the road, we jumped on making an offer. We had our floor plan figured out before we even bought our bus, just because we calculated the exact amount of space we needed to work and live comfortably. And a floor plan is something you definitely need to decide before doing anything on your schoolie. After completely gutting our bus and fixing up the steel floor base, we built our subfloor using 2x4s and 1.5 inch foam rigid insulation. We put our 2x4 studs exactly according to the floor plan so that we could secure walls, cabinets, and any other fixtures. We also ran in-floor heating throughout our bus, and of course only in the areas where we will walk, sit, or stand. Another thing that was important to us was to get the bus on the road as soon as we can as an RV so that we could drive it to different shops to work on and also use it as a hauler to pick up large materials throughout the build. In order to do that, we just had to remove all the school bus stickers, swing arms, stop sign, flashers, and paint the exterior any color but yellow. Removing those things was very easy, but before we could paint our bus, we had a couple major modifications we wanted to make. The first one being our sheet metal project, which a lot of you guys really liked. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a card up to that. Taking out the leaky windows and replacing them with sheet metal closed in both sides of the bus. But don't worry, we're going to be installing some brand new RV windows pretty soon. Doing the sheet metal gave us an opportunity to have better insulated and tinted windows and install them exactly where we want that fits with our floor plan. Another large modification we did on our bus before painting was our skylight in our bathroom. Luckily our bus was tall enough for us, but the nature of the school bus ceilings curve, which means less headspace closer to the walls. This wasn't a problem for most of the layout because all of our fixtures lined the walls, meaning we'd only stand and walk through the middle of the bus, where the roof is the tallest. The only thing we needed to compromise on was our bathroom. Being 6'1", I really wanted a little extra headroom in the shower. I always hated RV showers and how the shower head is always chest height. So we came up with a solution to build up the whole bathroom ceiling, almost like a chimney, to give us the extra height we were looking for. This modification was a huge win for us and we're so proud of how it turned out. Our biggest project to date was the paint job. There are many different ways to go about painting a school bus, some more difficult than others. We wanted the best paint job possible, but to achieve that, we had to work for it. The most important feature of any paint job is for the paint to stick. This means lots and lots of sanding, almost 200 square feet of surface to prep. For application, we decided to spray using a pressure pot system since Stephanie's father works in the automotive spray systems industry and was able to lend us a unit. For paint, we went with an industrial two-part automotive paint. We also primed the bus with the goal of covering the yellow in case we didn't get a perfect coverage with the blue because blue plus yellow equals green and we did not want a green bus. The application process for both the primer and the color had its snags and difficulties. But if you'd like to know more about the nightmare of a time painting the bus, I'd recommend watching our full video, which is linked in the description below. If you can't control your environmental conditions, spraying your paint is not worth it. Spraying can yield superior results compared to rolling, but unless you are a professional automotive painter, you might end up disappointed with the results. I'm glad we did, but I wish we didn't. After painting, we put our beautiful bus back together with all the fixtures and now it's all ready to be put back on the road, which is proving to be way more difficult in Ontario than we thought. We're still in the process of figuring things out with insurance companies and a mechanical, but as soon as we do, we will definitely make a video about that. Winter is approaching fast, especially in Northern Ontario, so we want to get this bus insulated as soon as possible so we can start on the interior. But there are a couple major things that need to get done first. This includes getting the underbody sandblasted and undercoated so we can install our underbody boxes, which will house our electrical and water system components, and our roof rack, which will be bolted through to the inside under the insulation. The stressful part is, we need to get this bus on the road to drive it to the shop to get sandblasted and undercoated, and we need the bus on the road to pick up the 24 foot pieces of steel to build our roof rack. Order of operations is something we've mentioned before. It's hard to determine what needs to be done first, and it's hard to have to hold off on other projects when you're stagnant on the current ones. 
Nonetheless, as soon as we have the bus on the road, we will have lots of work lined up for us to keep us busy, which means lots of upcoming videos. We're so excited for the next chapter of our bus build, and we're so happy that all you guys have joined us on this journey. Thank you for getting us to a thousand subscribers. It truly means so much to us to have your support. You motivate us to continue working on our dreams and putting out great videos for you to enjoy. We love documenting our progress and helping others who are interested in doing their own build. As we hit this major milestone on our channel, we wanted to have a way to connect to our subscribers more, so we decided to open a Patreon, which is a subscription-based platform to give you guys an opportunity to support us and receive exclusive content in return. We're offering exclusive Patreon-only live streams, tons of behind-the-scenes footage, and constant updates on our build. We're using Patreon as a way for us to connect more with our subscribers, and for you guys to get to know us more as we want to share more of our personal lives as well. So if you feel compelled to support us on the rest of our build and future travels, we've linked it below in our description where you can learn more about our different packages. Thank you so much again for our thousand subscribers, it truly means the world to us and we can't wait to keep growing our channel as we continue our build. Now let's get this bus on the road. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!